Team inboxes are beneficial for ensuring that the correct people on your team are alerted and have the correct phones ringing and also for tracking purposes so that you and your team members know exactly where a lead is calling from. So in Follow Up Boss, you can name your team inboxes according to the lead source. And when you or an agent gets an incoming call on their desktop or mobile phone, the caller ID will be the name of the team inbox. So this helps you know exactly where someone's coming from and you can have a great conversation starter. That way you're not picking up the phone and going, hello, you with no context, you can know ahead of time why someone may be calling you. So there are a few different use cases for using inboxes and I wanted to share those ideas. The first one is for incoming calls for Google local service ads. So if you use um, Google local service ads or Google business profile, you can set your phone number for incoming calls to ring the team inbox and follow boss. And the nice thing is you can set for the inbox to ring multiple people. That way you have a higher likelihood of getting the call answered. Google local services ads is very strict on your answer rate for how you rank in local service ads. So whenever you set up the team inbox, let me show you how to do that. So let's set up an inbox. You can create an inbox by going to the inbox section, follow up boss and click manage and you can create a new team inbox, team inbox, and you can call it whatever you would like. So let's say it's Google LSA. You can change the phone number if you'd like to a different, zip, uh, different area code and see if there's any numbers available. You can select the team members you'd like to receive the incoming calls for. And then you can select, do you want it to ring desktop, to ring mobile or not? I do recommend selecting to have the press one to answer option selected. Otherwise, let's say Angie's in the middle of a, an appointment with a client and her phone rings. In order to silence her phone, she declines the call. If this option is not selected, when she declines the call, it declines the call to the lead and Chris's phone stops ringing and Eddie's phone stops ringing. So press one to answer will prevent that from happening, where if Angie does happen to decline the call, it doesn't actually go to voicemail, it just keeps ringing Chris and Eddie's phone without ringing Angie's phone. And then you can select office hours if you'd like to, if you'd like it to go to the team inbox voicemail instead of a personal voicemail. And then same thing here, if there's no answer, if an agent isn't available to take the incoming call, it can go to the inbox voicemail or forward to a number. I always recommend inbox voicemail so that everything is tracked. And that way, whenever someone does have a chance to go to the inbox, the team inbox and follow up boss, they see the voicemails. Um, and so what's nice there is you can see exactly what someone is uh, calling about. So let's go through the other use cases. The next one is sign calls. If you have signs in front of front yards for homes you have listed, you can put this team inbox number in there so that you know exactly why someone's calling that number. Versus if you used one number for all of these different things, you don't know where someone's coming from for your own tracking purposes of what lead sources are producing the best income, uh, the most income, um, things of that nature. So you can have us have this phone number selected so that you have your specific buyer agents taking those calls for uh, sign calls. The next one is for any sort of media ads you're running, whether it's on radio, TV, or billboard, you know when someone's calling it's from a media ad you have. Another one is postcards. If you send postcards through platforms like Mailbox Power or through, if you send greeting cards through AM cards, uh, you can dedicate a phone number for people to call or text so that you know, oh, they're coming from a postcard we sent. Another cool one I'd recommend setting up is an agent hotline. If you have an operations manager or virtual assistant and a team of agents, those team of agents may need to request to stop receiving leads for a period of time, whether whether because they're too busy, they have too many appointments, they're out of office or they're on vacation, instead of them bugging you, the team owner, uh, to let you know about it and then you trying to remember, oh, I need to pause leads, this virtual assistant or operations manager can take the incoming calls to this agent hotline number where the agents just have this number saved on their mobile phone so that they can let them know, oh, I need to stop receiving leads or I'll be out of office. Please don't send me leads during this time. Especially if you're wanting to keep them accountable and they don't want it to go against their uh, stats and follow up boss because they weren't able to call the leads they received. This also helps you ensure that no leads are missed. If leads are sent via first to claim or even round robin, if an agent is out of town, any leads that get assigned to them are not going to get called. So that's where the agent hotline is very helpful. A broadcast line. So if you have an ISA within your company who needs to hand off a lead because they're hot, 
they want to talk to an agent to schedule an appointment, you can create a broadcast line where an ISA is making their calls through the dialer. Then they can say, okay, let me get you in touch with one of our agents. You'll call through, they'll call through the dialer while the lead is on the phone, the broadcast line. And whoever picks up the call because it rings all agents at once gets the lead. This is similar to like first to claim for new leads, except it's very high, ready to go, needs to talk to an agent lead. And the last idea is MLS calls. So if you have MLS listings and you don't want to waste time with questions from agents, or you're maybe you just want to know when an agent is calling you, then set up an MLS phone number that you use for your MLS listings. And you can have your assistant in that one, in that team inbox where you or your assistant will see, oh, an MLS, an agent is calling from MLS, probably about a question with one of our listings. You, while the admin is answering the phone, they can be opening up MLS to have any answers ready for the agents calling from MLS. And if you're wondering, you may have seen a bit ago that I was uh, looking at this list of team inbox ideas. We actually have a free team guide for setting up Follow Boss for success. And you'll see here on this left side, team inbox use cases is only one tiny part of this guide for setting up Follow Boss for success. So below this video in the description will be a link to have access to this guide.